Okay, we're back. We're live on a given Friday after July 4th. I'm Jay Fidel. I'm a co-host, and Tim Apicella is a co-host. Okay, and Cynthia joins us. Cynthia Sinclair, she's a co-host. And this is Trump Week! Woo! Wow, what kind of a week, Tim? <laughs> Happy belated 4th of July to you. An opportunity for us to feel good about where we live and an opportunity to feel and cherish our, our rule of law and our Constitution. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're talking about the event in Washington, or are you talking about your own personal reaction to July 4th? Just my own personal at this point. <clears throat> yeah. My reaction changes when I think about Washington, D.C. this weekend, or this yesterday, but that's okay. We can talk about that later. Yeah, Cynthia, how about you? How do you feel on July 4th? Well, I was um, watching the fireworks with all my children and my granddaughters, so it was pretty special for me, but... Um, it's been pretty strange being here in Alabama and the way people feel about things. How do they here. feel about it in Alabama? Well, it's kind of ridiculous. It's as if they live in some kind of bubble, of some sort of Fox News bubble, and they don't, at least the people I spoke to, I spoke to 25 different people and asked them three uh, questions, each one of them the same question about immigration, how they feel about Trump, and how they feel about the Mueller report. And, and overwhelmingly, they like Trump. Overwhelmingly, they don't care about the things he's done wrong. And, and overwhelmingly, they think that the Mueller report exonerated them. Wow. Which can, yeah, wow, but then You just, find that in, in at least half a dozen states and maybe more. And that's why I was feeling right. down on, on July 4th. I was feeling down because I, I saw all those, really, there were thousands of people there. Um, and they were listening to the music and feeling nostalgic about the music. And they were not focused on what he has done or not done. I mean, they have been guided by the disinformation and misinformation. There are tens of millions of Americans who are misguided by the disinformation and misinformation. They believe he was exonerated. They don't care about children drinking from toilets. Let's talk about what happened this week, aside from July 4th, because it actually, it actually depresses well, me. Well, you know, we should talk a little bit because the title is of this show. Oh, the title, yeah, you're right. The title is Tanks But No Tanks, uh, and that is July 4th in Trump country. So what about Tanks But No Tanks? May I say just one other thing, though, that I have a cousin who lives in D.C., and she had people visiting that really wanted to go to the parade. She does not like Trump, and she decided to go anyway. And there's all these kiosks and, you know, uh, street merchants selling Trump memorabilia all everywhere. And she was taking pictures of the label on most of the things, and it, you know, says <laughs> Donald Trump. Uh, collective wear or something like that. And then it says made in China on every single one of them. Made in China. And I thought that was really something. That is ironic, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I thought so too. Okay, well, moving on about tanks. What about tanks but no tanks? Well, tanks for the memories. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, you know, the tanks were a prop, um, you know, there was all sorts of rumors they were going to be rolling down the streets, you know, Pennsylvania Avenue in front, you know, in front of the memorial, and no, it didn't happen. They, they were just kind of put there on the side as, as, as props. Well, I think the mayor of Washington said something about well, it. Well, she was very concerned they were going to tear up the roadways. Yeah, well, and, you know, and, and mm -hmm. sort of cross the little bridges over the Potomac and and uh, one tank driver says to another, whatever happened to Smitty? Oh, he went in. Yeah. He, he's in the Potomac. <laughs> Poor Smitty. Yeah. Uh, it would have wrecked the city. It would have it ruined the city. Um, I think they thought wise of it. I'm sure it's not what Donald Trump want, but, it, you know, at some point someone said, look, you know, have the tanks on the side of the street. People will see them. They're not necessarily going to roll down and destroy these poor roads. And, boy, you know, so some kind of uh, reason came to play finally. Yeah. <clears throat> well, he, he gave a speech, which was, I mean, I wouldn't call it highly political. I was ignorant. <clears throat> it was highly ignorant, but not, not highly political. He claimed that the rain was washing over his uh, teleprompter, so he didn't know <clears throat> that in 1814 they had no airports. 
in Hawaii. He claimed that the <laughs> army, <laughs> the army, what, occupied the airports in 1814. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, he really didn't know what he was reading. Well, he, he kind of mismatched the War of 1812 with the Revolutionary War. <laughs> 1812, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, 14, yeah. you know, Fort McHenry. And, Fort McHenry. Yeah, right. he, was, he was all over the board on his history on that. But that's okay, because I'm sure he meant well. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But at least he didn't go wild, and he didn't, uh, you know, do a political divisive speech. He, you know, for him was pretty good, uh, considering his ignorance about American history. Um, but what about, you know, what about um, the rest of it? Uh, it seemed to me like he made himself the moderator. He made himself the, what do they call him, the master of ceremonies. The MC. The MC. He, he plas planted himself right in the middle of everything. That's not what we wanted, and that was breaking tradition, yeah. wasn't it? Well, the, you know, the secret about MCs is be an MC if you're a good MC. When you read off the teleprompter, I, I felt like I was in the fifth grade history class, yeah. and little Johnny's at the front of the room reading his report. I mean, what, you know, it was kind of embarrassing, yeah. but that's okay. It's not the first time, and it won't be the last time. Uh, but, you know, for him, the most important thing is being on the headlines and being yeah. in the public, you know, eye and uh, being occupying our consciousness. And he did. However, as you mentioned before the show, Tim, um, you know, there were earthquakes in California. There were other things happening, and the press didn't mind not covering so much, not, not covering him so much. I think people watched the music, but they didn't see it as a, they didn't see it as all about him. It wasn't really all about him. He could not make it all about him. Correct. You know? um, so let's talk about some of the other things that happened this week. One, uh, one I just want to mention. Um, is that um, there was a secret website that was found uh, that with the border, the border Patrol were exchanging smart-ass remarks um, about, about the, um, you know, the children and the people they were detaining in these inhuman conditions. Do you remember what happened? Cynthia, you want that one? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear my name first, and I was trying to be good and not talk when I'm not supposed to. <laughs> Uh, yes, it is unbelievable how well, they, they closed it down, the head of DHS said, oh, no, it's not a good thing. But apparently, somebody else found out that it was still open and being used, and they're just finding ways to go around it. They're not actually, you know, admitting that, yes, um, we should do it, and then, you know, cease and desist. No, they're just going and end around. So they will know, but they're still doing it. They were making sexually charged remarks about AOC and other people that have been down there to look at stuff. We finally have six now. Since they did finally let a couple of congressmen in, that's the biggest thing. You know, lots of congressmen and um, senators are trying to go down and get a look at things on an impromptu basis, and they're not allowed in. Well, it was a yeah issue about how how they uh, they couldn't bring their phones in. They had to surrender their phones. Meanwhile, the yep. border patrol was taking snapshots of of them, you know, selfies. Uh, it, it was right. really extraordinary. It was make believe uh, uh, security, make believe enforcement, and that's what you got right. here. This 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 agency is out of control. It needs to be reformed. Imagine making jokes about those kids, making jokes about the toilets and the food and the concrete. Floors they're sleeping on. Uh, they they have no imagine making jokes exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I think what it's showing is there's a you know, I, I'm sure the work environment is not easy. You know, so I, I'm I'm not a border agent. I'm sure the work environment is very very difficult. And there is something called you know gallows humor in every profession. You ask nurses, ask doctors, they have horrible jokes that I don't know psychologically help them through their day. But the problem is when you share that with one another and it becomes discovered, it shows that you're very obtuse. You're, you're, you're numb to the plight of, of these children and you're numb to you know, the horrific conditions they've been set forth. And that's the problem that's been portrayed in this website is that, you know, it's, it's real. It's just a job to them and what they see and how they react to it is, is, is really not part of the, the equation. The other website that came up this week is a website called JoeBiden.info. It's a false website. It was established by a, a member of the Trump campaign, a guy named Malden, as I recall. Um, and it, it mocks and gives disinformation and 
misinformation uh, about Joe Biden. Um, and it comes from Trump. So here we are into <laughs> dirty tricks. Here we are into, you know, disinformation and misinformation right here at home, directly from the campaign. And I'm saying to myself, well, that's only the top of the iceberg. Uh, fact is, there must be a lot of sites like that. Um, how many of them are being organized uh, and written and maintained by the, by the Trump campaign? How many are from Russia? How many are from or, Russia? Or, you know, the back door of Russia, through China, through North Korea. How many are, God knows for where they're going to be, um, you know, side, through the side door and, and pre presented. Right, right. And how many, how many false uh, and divisive uh, social media messages are happening right now? Uh, just like Russia was doing. Uh, Trump does it, too. He learned from them or they learned from each other. But it's going to happen. It is happening the same way it happened last time. And it's a year to go or more, you know, before the elite. We can expect to see this kind of thing on an ongoing basis. Um, that very, very disturbing. That's happening all. So while he's up there stumbling through the, uh, the teleprompter, the fact is he's doing other things that are really draconian. And we always have to watch. We always have to be uh, vigilant about yep. this. Now, do you, either of you have any confidence that Facebook and Twitter were going to eliminate fake accounts no, and posting no. this kind of material? I'm sorry, no. No. And I, and I no, wonder no. what... I have no confidence for that at all. Yeah. And, you know, even though we've, he got a bad ruling, from, like, even you know, by Justice Roberts, even, but he didn't actually stand up and say, no, you can't put this citizen question on the census because it's obvious the Republican gerrymandering, but he just said you don't have a good enough reason to come back when you do. So it's not over yet as far as the census thing goes, too, because now Trump is trying to stop the um, print of the census until he gets a better ruling. That's my, that was my, actually my favorite thing this week. I mean, favorite with a small f. The census. First, his administration right. said, okay, we'll abide by that. And we'll let the uh, census, uh, you know, documents get printed. You, you know, figure there are hundreds of millions of them. Um, and we'll have a census, okay, which is required. Required. Did I say required? You did say required. By the Constitution. By a certain date, too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he, then he said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't agree with the Supreme Court on this. Wait a minute. Agree with the Supreme Court? And he criticized the Supreme Court. They're, they're you know, I don't know what he said, but it was, it was bad what he said. It was a criticism of the Supreme Court. And then he, uh, he reversed the decisions of the Attorney General, and I don't know who else was involved in making that decision. Maybe it was the Department of Commerce that's printing them. Um, and he said, I want, to, I, want to find, I want to find some kind of justification. Go find a justification, he said. And this gets to be public. So let me, let me get this straight. It was a bad justification. Uh, the Supreme Court struck that justification, and he said, I don't know what the justification should be. Uh, I have no idea what the justification should be. Find a justification. Well, we're seeing... <laughs> Go ahead, Cynthia. Well, I didn't... Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just okay. Because he... Or, or... Go find the justification. <laughs> Okay, what I think is humiliating, here you have Wilbur Ross, who I'm not a big fan of, <laughs> but you have Wilbur Ross basically making an announcement for the agency, we are going to go ahead and print without the question on it. Can you imagine the Justice Department attorneys that now have to put their tail between their legs and, and, and scamper into the court to say, Yes, well, um, yes, um, yes, well, our client has changed his mind, and now we have to come up with a new reason. And can you imagine the look that's going to come down from the bench, down upon their eyes and say, really? And see how that goes. I hope so. I hope they say that. Because if they accept a second crazy justification, you know, which is really um, a crock type crust of justification, uh, I'm, I, people are going to lose confidence in the Supreme Court completely. They're going to see him as doing anything that, uh, you know, what Trump wants. But when you present your argument, isn't usually your best argument? Yeah. Before the Supreme Court? Yeah. But I think it's clear that Trump in initiated this question in the first place. People in the White House initiated it. Wilbur Ross went along with it. Um, and, now, and now they'll find something. He asked them to find something. It'll be, you know, completely ridiculous, um, and, and he will adopt that 
and then it'll wind up in the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, the deadline you mentioned in the Constitution for the census will, will come and go. He's mucked up the census is what he's done. We won't have a census on time. Well, well let's look at how this thing reversed itself in the first place. I hear um, read about Hugh Hewitt, who's a, you know, a radio personality, and other conservative uh, groups said, hey, President Trump, you caved in on this way too fast. Why did you do that? So now Donald's going, oh, I caved too quick. That's oh. what happened. And that's what happened. Yeah. So who's running this government? Is it Hugh Hewitt? Is it um, uh, Rush Limbaugh? I mean, who, is it Laura Ingram? Who, who's really running this country? It's really an embarrassment. Well, I mean, I, 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 I get it. I yes, think Cynthia. Big Money is running the country. And you know, the other thing that I was reading in the Washington Post about this whole census thing that I think is important and that is that now, regardless if that question ends up on the census or not, there are going to be both legal and illegal um, you know, immigrants that are not going to want to answer because they're afraid that it might get to the you know, government and they might end up having some kind of backpack. So even without that person actually ever making it to the census, it has already started which is to discourage people that are not, you know, full citizens from answering. Well, it depends on um, how this thing is played. Now, they could do a supplemental page. And so let's say they answer the first page and then the supplemental page is handed to them and they don't answer it. Will that survey be invalid because it's not 100% filled out? Or will the first page be submitted? That will go to the Supreme Court, too. Yeah. This, this, this census is mucked up as no census has ever been mucked up. Thanks to the, the partisanship involved. Um, okay, let's let's shift to um, international affairs. Uh, Tim, you mentioned, and I, I certainly saw this too. Um, there's an oil uh, tanker uh, that was uh, detained by what the British. The British. Uh, the tanker was taking oil from Iran um, to uh, Syria. Syria, um, and that's clearly going to be an aid of the Syria war, and in violation of Trump's. Uh, uh, you know, uh, with sanctions on, on, on Iran. Um, what's going on here? Why are the British doing this? I guess they're trying to be faithful to Trump. They're trying to adhere to the international sanctions they agreed to. Yeah. Um, Iran is horribly upset about this uh, for a variety of reasons. One, they need revenue, and two, you know, they see that's their sovereign, sovereign property and it should not be boarded and, and, and confiscated. Yeah, so we're, we're in this uh, heightened... Uh, argument, fight, if you will. We're getting more tension every day, every stroke on this kind of thing. And uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't bode well. Uh, they, at the same time, have said that they're, they're building bombs now. They're increasing yeah. their, their... The enrichment program the has enrichment begun. The enrichment program right yeah. now. So uh, this is very troubling that, that you know, he's, he's created a situation where we're, we're getting close to fisticuffs with Iran. Well, you have to hope that during the background of all this, these news stories, that there is a back channel, there is some, you know, negotiations quietly occurring, and that's your best hope. We don't know. Um, all we have to do is look at the headlines. But, you know, like the Cuban Missile Crisis, there was a back channel, there were negotiations, and it actually did prevent a, a, basically a, a huge world holocaust of nuclear energy. Yeah, I doubt it, though. I mean, it hasn't been that way. It's just been standing on a soapbox yelling. That's what he's been doing, yeah. threatening, doing his threat thing. And then, as you said, you know, he threats, he threatens and he backs off. And then he threatens again and backs off. Everybody doesn't know what he, nobody knows what he's going to do next. This does not lead to good relations, I would suggest. <clears throat> so but let's talk about Asia for a minute. Going on, uh, you know, he actually went to the 38th parallel, walked across the border by two feet, five feet, 10 feet maybe. And now we're in a new time of detente with North Korea. What does that mean? Ottawa, who knows? Maybe he's trying to put one more check mark for his Nobel Peace Prize. Um, who knows his motivation? <laughs> he desperately wants a peace prize. You know that. Um, and maybe this is just you know, part of the application process. Well, the question is whether he gets the peace prize or Ivanka gets the peace prize. What do you, what do you, think, what do you say, then, Cynthia? Is Ivanka going to get a peace prize for being a, new, a newfound uh, diplomat? 
oh my gosh, that's just absurd. <laughs> and I think the only reason that Trump is saying all these things is because he wants to make history. He wants to say, what I make history? I was the first one to ever go to visit the emperor of Japan. I'm the first one to ever go across to North Korea. He's doing things that don't actually create any kind of positive policy or don't do anything that actually changes history. He just is, is able to think, oh, I was the first one. I made history. He just wants to be able to have that title. It's, it's, the, it's the ultimate nepotism. It is. And uh, yeah, she knows exactly. as much. Uh, she knows as much. She and uh, her husband know as much about uh, diploma diplomacy and foreign affairs as my as my my puppy, who I love very much. I love my puppy more than I love that. <laughs> well, you oh know, my gosh, that's one thing you know that they had, that I've heard from people as I ask them about how to report and all that sort of stuff. Is that that's one of the things that when. Um, Jared had come out and said that bit about how, oh, it was just a couple of Facebook posts, right? That's what they believe. He honestly believe that when I asked him specifically about Russia, well, how do you feel about the fact that Russia interfering on election? You know, what they really affect the election? I mean, all it was was a couple of Facebook posts. And I think, my gosh, how can you not know the truth? How about, uh, how about China, Tim? What, what do you think about China these days? Um, is there, you think there's any chance there's really going to be detente there? Uh, the, you know, the, um, what do you call it, the, the ceasefire? Uh, Trump said um, he would not raise tariffs on China. Uh, and China you said. Even on the were, last 300, 300? Yeah. Uh, he, the he, 25%. He's just going to oppose the 300, whatever it is, yeah. a billion. Well, there's that guy who donated, what was it? I can't remember the exact amount. 750 like million. Million. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. The fireworks, and then he's also the one uh, Illinois or somewhere in the Midwest that he's a businessman, and it would hurt him, those tariffs. So he's the one who donated that money, and it just, or those fireworks, and it just so happens that that's the same day that Trump decides to not go ahead with that next document. But what I don't understand is, is how all of this um, leads to a confidence in the American public. Uh, no. You know, to to have new jobs, and uh, you know what, a quarter million new jobs uh, in the month of June, I think it was, um, and and the economy seems okay, although there are there are flaws in it, and the economists tell us watch out because mm -hmm. this could be a break, a, you know, a breakthrough type economy where it falls apart any day. Um, but you know, but a good economy depends on confidence. And people, apparently, people in general, I think. I guess they're confident. They're confident. I, you know, again, I think they believe the story that these tariffs are, are damaging China, where I don't know why they believe that, but they do. I guess that's because Donald Trump told them so. But in fact, we know this is a tax against the consumer. And that's just how it is, and that's how I'm being paid. They don't understand that. And Trump says, oh, it would be even better if we got Powell to reduce uh, the, the re, you know, what do you call it, the... Uh, uh, the, the Fed, Fed rate. The Fed rate. And uh, we, we would really, he said, quote, go to the moon, I think he said, um, or Mars, <laughs> as the case may be. He's not going to Mars. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I don't understand. This is a big disconnect, which will ultimately catch up to us, because we don't have the money to do what he wants to do. The Tax Reform Act is a, was a horrible mistake. It's not going to get reversed anytime soon. Um, and and we're, we, we have a deficit of something like $2 trillion on his watch. Uh, so, you know, I think we are facing a huge economic problem going forward. It may visit itself between now and yeah. the election. Well, I think Susan hit it right on the uh, early part of the show is um, where people get their information is the bubble. And if that's the only bubble they're contained therein, um, everything that is stated in that bubble, Fox News, that's what they believe. And... When it comes to the tariffs, they absolutely do not believe this is a tax against them, yeah. although their pocketbook is starting to show it. Okay, we're almost out of time. Yeah. I, want to take, I want to take a moment to look to next week and see what we think is going to happen next week. The 4th of July is over. Um, the Democrats uh, seem fragmented. Sorry. Um, the, the committees that are supposed to be doing all the investigation in the, in the House, uh, you haven't heard much from them. Um, 
And, you know, we seem to be in a, in a, a quiet time even. Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. What's going to happen next week? Well, I think you're going to hear more um, collateral damage from these, you know, these horrific conditions at the border. I think more information is going to come out of that. Um, I am a little upset that they're spending so many days talking about the, uh, the Democratic, um, you know, debates. I mean, how many, how many days did they talk about that when we had this horrible news coming out of, you know, at the border down in Texas? It was uh, it's outrageous as far as I'm concerned. So I think you can hear more about the border issue. I think you're going to hear a little bit more about how Iran's going to settle out. And I think Venezuela is going to pop its head up. Um, there's uh, incarcerations and the murder of that Navy captain in Venezuela. And that is really sparking a lot of protest. Yeah. People are very upset about that. Yeah. And mind you, by the way, I mean, suffice to say, aside from the disinformation and the misinformation, there's nothing good happening. Nothing good. This, none of these initiatives are working. Infrastructure, nothing, nada. Um, no, you know, no, no tuning up of legislation, no forward motion of legislation. Um, and and his, the only executive orders you hear about is how he's going he to make an executive order on the, on the census, yeah. flexing his muscle on that. But I don't, I don't see anybody in Washington doing any real work. That's my thing. It's not managing the chaos at all. There is no management. Yeah. Uh, Cynthia, you know about chaos. What do you think is going to happen next week? <laughs> well, I'm always looking for the respect in the chaos, and I have seen that there will be enough people that will be absolutely outraged about what happened with the children down there. But I know down here in the South, when I asked the immigration question of the 25 people I spoke with, and this well, they shouldn't have come here in the first place, is what I have heard. And I think, oh, no. I just, this just is me a lot. And in my mood, people will start really getting worked up about establishing election security. Um, like, you know what you were saying, Kim, about how they spent so much time on the debate. And everybody that would come on, I think, look. Who cares about which candidate is better? If we don't have election security, it doesn't matter who's running. So that's my, you know, broken Okay, record, all I right. Know. I'd like to make a prediction, <laughs> if you would. My prediction is that on Monday, that's one business day away, and even over the weekend, he is going to try to retake the headlines. Because that's what mm -hmm. Donald Trump does. He tries to retake mm -hmm. the headlines every week. You'll win the bet. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'll win the bet. The only question is, what does he do to retake the headlines? It can either be some, some war thing around uh, Iran, uh, something in Asia. It can be, uh, it's, it's got to involve the kids and the Border Patrol. It's got to be some outrageous thing. Um, and as you said early on, you know, he'll go to the limit and then pull back just to get our attention. Yep. Okay, why don't you close? You're my, you're my co-host here, Tim. Well, the close is, um, you know, I'm glad we got to the 4th. I'm glad people had a good time. I hope they had great picnics. But, yeah, hang on to your hat for Monday, and it's a long week next week. All right. We'll yep. see, see you here in one week's time. Trump week. Trump week. Trump week. Aloha. Aloha. Trump week. Aloha.